positive. When, when we uh, criticize ourselves, I think it's very important to criticize in two ways, positive and negative. In other words, we are artists, we are trying to better ourselves every day. And if you have a magical moment, I hope you will capitulate uh, the race, something very special. We have to analyze when I hit it right, what did I do so right? Because I have to do it again tomorrow. And if we are not so happy to try to analyze, so can you tell us a little bit what you want? Um, I like a lot what you had said before about how you're remembering sometimes. So I think that's sort of a simple reality in the beginning. Yes. It's just sort of looking back at the past and about something that happened. Like you just found out something that's sort of like it's mm -hmm. sad. And then, um, and then you know, again, what you said, the anger, I guess, sort of, um, maybe some frustration. Mm -hmm. um, but your performance, per se, are you happy with it? Oh. Or not so happy? What are you happy about or not so happy about? Oh, um, there, there, I mean, there's some notes, of course, that I did. Yeah. Like, and then, so control? Um, yep. And then some, some dynamics that I didn't like as much either. I mean, I would have to show you the music video. Yeah, no, I'm <laughs> sorry. I, I know how to do this. Because uh, you see, it's an interesting approach. If you, uh, the philosopher Ar Aristotle, thought that if I said, uh, Lizzie, here's um, 20 pieces of wood. Please pick up the two equal in length and color. You could do it because your knowledge came before your experience. Some, someone told you what colors and someone taught you what length and equalness is. And Aristotle was very interested in what is equality, not what they taught you, what it is. And that was his research. And uh, when you can name, you also believed you could find things because the truth was inside you, not outside. So it's an interesting how you conceive of it. And I think that when you, you know, we all have many teachers in our lives. But if you realize that the greatest teacher you'll ever have is you, because you can sing, and your playing is an image of who you are and what you believe. So I'll give you a simple example. Can you sing me the second? Uh, just the opening, or hum it, you know, there are people, so sometimes it's embarrassing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Sing it all, but try it. You know, no teacher knows it all. There's no, no way. So it's not like, even if you play for Alfred Brendel, a wonderful Schubertian, Yes, uh, it doesn't mean he knows better Schubert, it means he lived longer with it. But if you experiment with the material, uh, try it as short as possible. Let's say you sing it, pop, 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 pop. What does it do to the material? It sections it and it gives, it changes the character. So if you say nostalgic remembrance, uh, as human beings, when we are affected by emotions. See, uh, music is the reverse of our lives. If you are annoyed and someone didn't call you and was supposed to, and you're like, I can't believe that I, your voice is starting, the volume goes up, you articulate more, you don't think, I'm getting annoyed, maybe I should start articulating more and do a big crescendo with my voice. That it happens to you. <coughs> In music, when in reverse, it says crescendo, it says staccato, it says, but we don't know what it stands for. So, would you agree that people that feel tenderly, people that feel angrily, to be obvious in my contrast, do not behave the same way, do not articulate the same way? Everything, pupil dilatation, muscle, everything looks different because relaxed or not relaxed. So, if you believe. Then there's a certain connection. Do you see what I mean? Of sound. I hear a lot of when you play, you can. Pa -pa -da, pa -pa -da. Yeah. 
I know why. There's a staccato there. But, you know, uh, we have to consider that, you know, you're more than an automat. I always, you know, I teach a lot of children, so sometimes my examples are childish, but I think they, even grown-ups can understand, and that's the one advantage. <laughs> uh, when you have a sign that says walk at the light, if you decide, hey, it says walk, well, I hope you still check if the car made a red light, right? Otherwise, you will die, and you'll be in a situation explaining to God, mm, well, it said walk. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, the, alter the opposite is the sign won't change. Maybe the mal electric malfunction. Will you, how long will you wait? One hour, two hours, three hours? You know, there's a point where you are obviously it's not working. I'm taking my chances, right? So, in, in front of a score, if you are, you know, when a typical in Chopin, you have asterisks, right? When you have to remove the pedal. And any time a pianist sees an asterisk, the foot goes up. Right? If you say PED, the foot goes down. But that has nothing to do with reason. <laughs> it's, it's an automatism. You know, we're trained. We see walk, I walk. I see no pedal, and my foot goes up. I see forte, I bang a little louder. It's a learned response, but it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just that. So, just an interpretation. Let me give you an idea. Let's say, uh, you see, we, we were all taught a bunch of things. Generally, it's, uh, it's the same stuff. Staccato is short, legato is long, forte is loud, piano is soft, you know, the usual pedal, no pedal, uh, etc. What is interesting, I find, if you're an interpreter, is to assign different values to all those known things, right? We're not in a autocracy, so we can think for our own. It's possible to say legato is faint. So, can you try 
try one more time and with the pedal connect first to the second note a little bit. <laughs> Schubert, you can, let's say, Mozart, you could have a quarter pedal. 
note. So, uh, and then of course you get in Rachmaninoff, you drop that one. So you can have a third pedal. Because you can say, oh, it's Debussy. It becomes more sonorous. So, that's how deep is the quality. How high, do you see? This piano, I have to go all the way here to cut it. So, if I do um, uh, harmonies, and I go, can you hear that I mixed? It doesn't mean, so sometimes we say the word too much pedal. We have to be more specific. Is it the aesthetic, how rich the sound is, like a creamy muffin versus drier muffin? Or is it how often you change it? Is it not well changed? That means not high enough. Now, if you think about all of this and you do, if you stay here, one, two, three, and then you move, meaning you hold full down, then you're going. that 
when I was a kid, uh, all of us have experimented that. You go quarter, 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 a whole note. You stay four times longer in the whole note. That's how it's written. But in romantic music, anything written, I would say, after Beethoven, you can use the technique. Because if you go down, stay, late, last stay, late, late, you get accent, you get a little agitated. Now, I want to make sure it's not staccato in the sense up. It's just, do we agree that once you're done, do you need to come up before you do the next? Of course you do, to play the next note. Right? You need to come up before you play. The question is, when do you come up? So if you come up at the last minute, that makes it nervous. So I give you an example. It doesn't have to be short like this because that's not very natural. But that's so
So it's not. Uh, so when the, in the end you feel all the legato, the, that quality, let's say that you have a clarinet. Uh, it's so easy the clarinet becomes. Thank you. 